Hello, the microphone is active, so let's go immediately to, to our problem. And so this is the exercise I gave you last time, and uh, the question was apply gauss green theorem to the irrotational but non-conservative field, and this is the planar field we know very well. On the circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. Hmm? What do you find? Why? And so, so uh, the exercise is formulated in a sort of a vague language. It is not very rigorous, but the idea is to try to play a bit with, uh, with uh, our uh, instruments, with our tool, in particular the Gauss-Green theorem. And so first we have to draw a picture. So we have a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. So I drew it like that. Okay, let me... Okay, this is the circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. And of course it is not uh, clearly stated, but uh, we orientate it in the positive direction like that and this is C and uh, this is like that C is equal to cosine of T on the direction I plus sine of T in the direction J with T in 0 to pi and so we already computed the circulation of the field F on C and we found that the integral on this closed curve C, the line integral of the field F, equals exactly 2 pi while what happens to, to this problem when we try to apply Gauss-Green theorem and so we already know, we already computed that uh, two, uh, sorry, the derivative with respect to x of f2 minus f1 differentiated with respect to y is always equal to zero. So if we call D the internal part, so D is the internal part of the circle, what we find at the end is that the integral on D of DF2 in the x minus the f1 in dy dx dy it's an area integral this is equal to zero so here you have 2 pi here you have zero of course they are not the same things so Green's theorem seems to fail and so my question is that why is it possible that a mathematical theorem that is provable rigorously we did not do it rigorously but it is possible to prove it Green's theorem seems to fail so the question is, how is it possible? Okay, if you don't have immediately the answer, think, uh, think of it five minutes, stop the video, stop the video, analyze what we did, and uh, go back to Green's theorem and read the statement and see what happens. Okay, five minutes, stop.
And now I start. I assume that you spend at least five minutes in thinking about that and recall what says Green's theorem. Green's theorem requires that C is regular and positively oriented and uh, this is true and uh, moreover it also requires that f is c1 so it is differentiable and with uh, continuous derivatives in all points of d But uh, this is not true because uh, the field is not even defined at the origin. We already stressed this fact, I stress it again. So F is not even defined. At the origin. So everything fails. The Green's theorem cannot be applied to this case. Okay? I want to stress this fact because, as usual in advanced mathematics, Green's theorem is not only a matter of computation, even though I presented it as it. So take it as a matter of computing. It is not only like that. Green's theorem has hypothesis of regularity and this hypothesis must be fulfilled. So there are many subtleties on this example. I don't want to go through all the subtleties because they are very nice. They really introduce you to a nicer mathematics. But this, this goes beyond the scope of our course and of our exam and so on. But as a homework, so here the answer, the answer is that F is not defined at zero so Green's theorem cannot be applied And here I want to give you another exercise, and another exercise with its, which is connected to this one, and is the following. It seems to be theoretical, but this is not. I can give you exercises like that in the exam. So the exercise is the following. Prove by using Green's theorem prove that the field so the integral f dot dr where f is the field we just studied so it is minus y divided x squared plus y squared and then x divided by x squared plus y squared And C is a, a regular closed 
and positively oriented curve. Oop, what happens here? So this integral is equal to zero if the origin zero zero is in the internal region of the curve, is inside the, the curve. And two pi if zero zero is in the oh sorry it is, it is uh, the contrary is zero if it is in the external region of the curve two pi zero zero is in the internal region of the curve. I don't want to treat here the case in which uh, the origin is in the curve. Okay? The curve passes through the origin, even though in physics this is very interesting and this is very studied. But I don't want to touch that um, in our point of view, which is uh, very simple. Um, we ask the integral to be regular on the curve and we want to integrate it. Okay? So, here, by using Green's theorem, and also by using the information that on the unit circle around the origin, the uh, line integral of the field is equal to 2 pi, you can, uh, you can do that. So, again, 5 minutes, end of 5 minutes, think of it. It is very important that you think of it, even though you don't solve it. Think of it, understand the problem, at least understand the problem, and try to put your hands on that. So, the solution... is very easy, at least the first part is very easy, first. So if the origin is in the external region of the curve, Then what you have uh, is quite simple. Here you have, uh, again, the, the plane. And uh, the curve is here. You see the origin here is outside so now if you consider the region d which is uh, inside the curve the internal part of the curve here very simply you have that this the field is regular on every point, every point of D, not like in the previous case. So one can apply Gauss-Green theorem and I recall you that for this field we have that d dx f2 minus df1 dy is equal to zero. So since this happens, one has that the integral on c is 
is equal to zero. On the other hand, consider the second. The second is a bit more complicated. This is very natural. Just apply Green's theorem. The second is a bit more complicated. So here we are in the case in which zero zero lies is in the internal part of the curve. So this line, the origin has to be contained in the internal part of the curve. So you have a curve like this. And uh, so a bit smaller, I want to do it a bit smaller because otherwise the construction will be okay. This is the curve C. And so since the curve is closed, you can of course consider a circle center at the origin center at the origin and which is uh, it's very difficult to draw a circle okay and which contains the curve C, the curve C okay so both of them are positively oriented and now just consider two auxiliary curve like this for instance this one here or uh, mm -hmm. okay two curves yeah it is better one black here, this is called gamma 1, and the second one, for instance, green here, this is called gamma 2, and this <laughs> upper part of C, let us call as C plus, this is C minus, and the upper part of the circle, let us call it Let's call it uh, this gamma plus and gamma minus. Mm? So let us consider let us consider this curve the first curve let me call it <laughs> This capital gamma plus, just a notation, is equal to what? Is equal to I start from gamma plus, then I do gamma one like that, then C plus on the opposite direction, and gamma two. Okay? This is gamma plus. I have to fix better the orientation. And for what concerns gamma 1 is like that. For gamma 2, I do it like that. Hmm? So gamma plus is what is, uh, I want it to be positively oriented. So this will be the union of gamma plus, small gamma plus, then gamma 1. Then there is uh, this part here, which, which is minus C plus, because it supplies it in the opposite direction. So minus C plus and union, union minus gamma 2. OK. So this is a, a closed regular curve. Not always regular, there are some corners, but don't they don't, don't then don't do anything it is regular except a finite number of points so it is good regular curve 
So let me put it in quotation marks. This is a closed regular curve with the origin in its external part. The curve does not contain the origin. Okay? So by the previous exercise, we have that the integral on gamma plus of f dr is equal to zero. Okay? Why? Because uh, we use Green's theorem that states the following states that uh, here inside the, the curl is zero. The d dx f2 minus d dy f1 is equal to zero, so we have zero, like in the previous exercise. Now we do the same with this part. We go like that, and this time, in a pretty analogous way, we define gamma minus as being small gamma minus union gamma 2, union this time is minus c minus union minus gamma 1 and we have that f dot dr is equal to zero okay so in these two curves capital gamma 1 and capital gamma 2, the two integrals are equal to 0. Now, we compute of course, here we have capital gamma minus. We compute the following. We know that 0 is equal to the integral of f uh, dot dr gamma plus plus gamma minus and now we wrote term by term in the components of gamma plus and gamma minus so this is equal to the integral on I don't write uh, the f dot dr. I just write uh, this is small gamma plus plus gamma it was gamma 1 plus the integral in minus c plus plus the integral in minus gamma 2. This was uh, the first term, I put it in yellow. And now the second term is plus, plus, and here we have gamma minus, plus, it was minus gamma one, plus minus C minus, plus gamma two. And this is the second term, this one. Now let us recall the following. That uh, when you have the minus on the curve, 
This is minus the integral on the curve. And at the same, the same way, this is minus the integral on gamma 1. So there are terms that cancel out. For instance, this guy here, minus gamma 1, cancels gamma 1. And minus gamma 2 cancels gamma 2. So moving forward, we find this is equal to gamma plus plus gamma minus minus c minus minus c plus but of course the two first term are the integral on gamma the circle the external circle now i write it again minus the integral on c Okay, but all this stuff amounts to zero. This is zero here. So there, what we have is that the integral on gamma, sorry, on C, is equal to the integral on gamma. But we already computed gamma is a circle, an outside circle, which is equal to 2 pi, as already computed. Therefore, Green's theorem allows us to move from a circle that we know how to compute to an arbitrary curve that contains the origin. Okay, and we stop here.